Today, in the second episode of our Desktop Wars series within a series, we're going to be looking at the Thing Desktop. Now, before we get cracking, I just want to cover off where we were at the end of the last episode. We'd installed Ease Desktop, and in doing that, had created these two sets in Xboot. The Ease set copies Ease's configuration file over my AES's desktop.conf, and the Teradesk one copies its config over desktop.conf too. Now this top set doesn't do that. This set boots into Mint without copying any files. In other words, it boots the last desktop that was run, in our case, Ease v5. So we can use this set to bootstrap our installation of the Thing desktop. So let's start it. So in my episodes folder for this week, here's the folder Thing129, or Thing.129 rather. And I want to say a word about this distribution I have. It has two folders, Thing127 and Thing129. And Thing129 is described as a beta. So we're going to go with Thing127. However, with our sort of flexible boot system, we could go with both of them if we wanted to and just swap between the two. Now there's no install program with Thing, so we're just going to copy the folder into the correct place in our C drive. I'm going to try and put it into this desktops folder off our C drive. It didn't work with ease, but that's the way I want to go. And hopefully it'll work with all future desktops. So let's create a new folder in C called desktops. And the shortcut for that is Control N. And let's copy thing.127 across that folder. Now inside of this folder is thing.app. And that's what we need to make as our current desktop. So to do that, we go to C, Gemsys, My AES. And we open desktop.cnf with the QED editor. And we need to set the shell to U, C, desktops, thing.127, slash thing.app. And we need to set our AV server and font select variables to thing padded with eight characters. We're going to save that and then we're going to do a save as and save it as dt underscore thing dot cnf. And if we get everything right, that'll be there for when we create the thing config in Xboot. So let's grasp the nettle and reboot. And if something goes wrong, we'll fix it in Emutos. So in Xboot, we're going to launch into the last use set, and that's mint-1-19. And that's going to use the desktop.config that we just edited. And Control q is the shortcut key to launch into the last use set. And in the desktop, we see thing desktop 1.27. So what do we do next? Well, out of the box, we have our A, B, C, and D, and the universal drive on the top. And down at the bottom right, we have the printer, the clipboard, and the trash can. Hey, back to American English, right? We haven't rearranged these, so this is a sort of a better startup configuration than the other desktops we've played with. Now, I have no idea why the default icon for drive A is an SD card, but we'll fix that in a bit when we get to look at the icon manager. So unlike Ease that we looked at in the last, ep last episode, there's no notes functionality in Thing Desktop, but I guess there are a dozen of apps for that so it's not a major failure now when we evaluated the ease desktop there was kind of an elephant in the room and that was it didn't support the u drive in the file explorer that is let's just go straight there and see if we've got the same problem in, in thing and no we don't it works so from opt we can navigate as a folder with with abandon so let's look at the file explorer itself and to do that i'm going to want a couple of windows open and one specifically needs to have a lot of files in it so hang on a sec while i queue this up and I think we'll use Gemsys for a folder with a lot of files in it. So first thing I noticed when running this was the startling lack of a toolbar. So do we have to go hunting for display options and things like that in the menus at the top? Actually, we don't. Thing Desktop does something that we haven't seen in an Atari desktop so far. It implements a right-click menu. Would you look at that? How modern. So let's have a look at these options top down. So we have new. I can create a new folder, a new object group, a new link, or an alias or a file. Now I won't cover aliases today, so we'll move on for that. Groups we will definitely cover later because they were in NeoDesk and they're a feature that I really like. So first of all, let's select a folder and create a folder within it called temp. And then just for the sake of art, I'm going to use the delete option in our right click menu to remove it, just so we see that functionality. And I mean, you could also create an empty text file in that way. And if you had an association between, say, star.txt and an editor like QED, you could create the file, double click on it, and open it for edit straight away, which is much faster than, say, launching QED, creating a new file, clicking save as, and then navigating the file system to where you want to be. So that's a nice little time saver. Show info shows information about files and folders, attributes like size and date, and the flags associated with the files. You can also assign a function key to a file and open it from that key in the editor associated with it. 
or launch it if it's an executable. Refunction keys are really powerful in Thing Desktop and kind of a great boon for power users. So let's have a closer look at show info in an executable, shall we? So I'm going to navigate to Vidality.prg and as we can see, the program tab is now enabled and you can see options associated with that specific executable. And then we'll go back to our temp folder and then we can talk about some cool functionality. Let's select a couple of files, right click and say mark for copying. Now we're going to move over to our temp folder and we're going to right click and select paste. And it's copied our files across. So I'm going to create a new folder within here and call it dest. And I'm going to select the same three files. This time I'm going to mark them for move and I'm going to go into dest and paste. And if we go back up a level to the parent, we'll see that the files have in fact been moved rather than copied. This is all very good. Now, you could achieve the same results using standard functionality in most of the later gem desktops and emutos and all sorts of things by dragging and dropping to copy or dragging and control dropping to move. But this mark for move or copy mechanism is way easier to discover than key modifiers. I mean, I swear there were people back in the day who didn't even know that the control key did anything during a drag and drop. Okay, I need to do a little bit of tidy up just to get rid of that stuff. So I'm going to drag our folder to the trash can. Now let's look at our display options. We have show us text, mini icons or icons. Well, let's start with mini icons. So this is a text mode where certain folders and files have miniature versions of the full size icon representing them rather than text mode, which just has a standard placeholder image for folders and files. Now, not all files that have icons associated with them have mini icons. So I'm not 100% sure what's going on there. I presume there must need to be a mini icon in the resource file for it, but I'm not sure. And I guess trying to just scale the full icon image down would, would look pretty crufty, frankly. So here's every developer's favorite mode, show us text. One thing I want to highlight here is the resize behavior. I'm going to skip ahead a little and go to appearance and add some extra data to the display. So I'm going to show date, size and the attributes. Now, when I was demoing Teradesk when we first installed Mint, I complained vociferously about how it handled multiple columns of files in text mode. It had a habit of going to two column mode when there was just the smallest amount of space to, to show the name of the file. And so often files in the second column were very difficult to find. And sometimes you couldn't even see that they were there at all. Now, the way thing works is that it only shows the second column when there's enough window space to show all of the attributes that you've selected. So if we reduce the number of attributes here and resize the window, we get a very clear multi column display. So this to me is a big tick of the box for thing desktop. So now it's time to look at some sort options. We have the same operations as in all desktops, really. We can sort by name, size, date, and extension. So let's try size. And the smallest is at the top. So then we'll select reverse sort to see the largest at the top. And we can show files in unsorted order. And this is a useful feature in the auto folder, as it allows you to see the order that apps are run at startup if you don't have Xboot. And really in our installation, it doesn't matter because we have so little in auto because all we're really running in auto is the stuff to get Mint up and running. So let's look next at filtering. I'm going to select a mask of star.sys and there are all the sys files in that folder. So how do you add a mask to the list of masks I hear you say? Well, on the surface, you can't. But in this area, Thing Desktop is really clever. So let's look at the list of masks there. And we have star.cnf, star.inf, star.prg, and star.scr. Thing has looked at the files in the folder and created the list of extensions you can filter by from the actual content. And that's really, really clever. I mean, of course, you can enter your own mask, for example, if you wanted to search for ICO star.star. .star but the default ones are populated from the files that exist. And one other thing to bear in mind if you're using this desktop is these are not DOS style wildcards. So star matches all files, star dot star matches files with a period in them. We'll have a look at appearance options. So we've already looked at attributes. We can specify a text color, a background color, and a fill pattern, should we choose to. I've experimented with this and black and white looks good. <laughs> let's spe we can specify a font. So let's go for our favorite monospace 821. And in this font selection part, I'm not liking the way the scroll bar works. It's very weird. 
Okay, that looks fine to me. Text is a little wonky, but I think that's because of screen scaling on my Apple monitor, not the font itself. Now, what you can see is that the font is the same in these two windows. So the display settings are global. There is no cycle window button here like Ease had, but there is a menu item and associated keyboard shortcut of Control W, which is, I think, the same as Ease. And it works. So we press Control W and we cycle between our windows. And on a final note here, if we set this window to icons and this one to mini icons, you can see that each window's display icons are unique. And that's a feature I've said several times before. That's an absolute must have for me. And it's kind of what kills Teradesk. So that's a big tick for a uh, thing desktop there. Let's have a tour of the menus. In the file menu, we have open. So if you use the file open dialog to navigate through a file, it will be opened in the application associated with it. And I think it's better in the context of the right click menu to be truthful. So in the file explorer, we can create a new file and then open it as I mentioned earlier. But let's take a look at the new object menu item. One of the options is create a new object group. And this begs the question, obviously, what is an object group and what does it do? Groups are a feature that allow you to create a virtual folder that you can drag files into from anywhere on your drives and use them just like an ordinary folder. I first came across groups in NeoDesk and they were a very useful feature at times. So I'm going to create a group called myapps.glp and notice it's stored in the thing folder. We'll title the group My Applications and I'm going to leave the check check to say create an icon on the desktop and I'm going to leave the item checked to say save automatically. So let's stick a couple of apps into it. So I'm going to um, put QED in there and then I'm going to add ZView. So we have two items in our group and it should have been automatically saved. So I'm going to close this window and there's our group icon on the desktop. So let's open that. And I'm going to double click on ZView. And there it is, it's running. Now drag and drop to these should automatically work as well. So let's uh, let's drag a sign.sys onto the QED icon in our group. And there you are, it's open, nice. Now we'll say from experimentation that group creation in Thing Desktop is not as powerful as NeoDesk. In NeoDesk, you can run a powerful search that, you know, searches across all folders and subfolders, and then all of those results you can automatically populate a group with. Here it's strictly drag and drop. But again, groups are powerful stuff. So big tick for having them. Now for the rest of the menus, the edit menu has the standard cut, copy, paste, and delete functionality. The terminology here is different from the terminology used in the file explorer. There it was mark for copy and mark for move rather than copy and paste. But the functionality is the same. Now we've already covered the contents of the display menu and we were talking about the file explorer. So we'll move on to the windows menu and most of this we've already looked at. There's an option there to duplicate a file explorer window. This was in NeoDesk on the toolbar and it is a very useful feature, especially when you're navigating down a path in the file explorer and all of a sudden you realize you need to sort of diverge and branch off into two separate subfolders. You can duplicate your window and just away you go. Now the tools menu contains a configurable drop down list of applications and Ease Desktop had the same functionality. Let's look at the meat of what we've got left, which is the extras menu. So the applications menu entry allows you to set up file associations for applications. The functions entry lets you set up files and applications that are opened when a particular function key is pressed. And of course, configuration is what it looks like. And then the rest of the items are pretty much standard desktop there with the exception of two things. The console window, I'm not going to cover because unless we choose thing as our daily driver, it's just a bit of a distraction at the moment. And then even then we wouldn't use the built in uh, toss to gem in this desktop. We would probably use toss win two from mint. So I want to take a quick squiz at the configuration. And what I'm going to do is what I did last time is I'm going to step through the tabs and you can freeze frame if you want to see what's on individual tabs, but I'm not really going to talk about any of them. So that's the configuration menu item. Let's look at the function keys. So let's have a look at this. What I want to configure here, I want to set up the fact that if I click Shift F1, I want to start QED. Under the tab for Shift function key press, I'll enter the path to QED.
back on the desktop you can't see it but i'm pressing shift f1 and as you can see qvd is running now this is powerful stuff and really speaks to the shall we say the inner developer in me i could see me using this all the time if this is our desktop on an aside actually one thing that surprised me was there's no default file viewer app for thing desktop whereas ease had a really good one but we could always retrofit one of those because there was lots of them around shall we say so now I would like to look at the edit icon assignments option. So at first, after opening the icon manager, it looks full screen, but it's worth bearing in mind it's not. It's just an application so we can resize the window. And that's going to come in useful in a bit when we drag and drop stuff into it. As usual, there are icons and there'll be rules about what icons to apply to what files in the desktop and in the file explorer. So let's have a close look at the icon for txt. This is saying that the icon applies to files. That's what that little F at the start of the line means. And it will be applied to any files with the extension of text, doc, or STG. Now you can edit a rule by selecting it, and then you can change the criteria at the bottom and press the Alter key. You can also delete a rule with a delete button, but there's no add button. And that had me a bit stumped for a while, I have to say. But there are two ways to do this. One is to click the empty entry at the end, set the criteria you want to match and hit alter. And I have to say, using an invisible UI element is a smart UX move there thing desktop. Really clever. Or alternatively, we can use drag and drop. So if I drag in thing icon.txt, it sets up a rule for the exact file name match because the star.txt already exists. Thing can also update as you edit. So let's go to full icon mode in the file browser. Now assign.sys has a plain icon associated with it. Let's update it to look like the text icon. And then I'm going to save the icon manager state. It'll ask me if I want to reload the icons. And when we do, you can see that the icon changes are live. Now we already have a rule for star.sys set up. How would we know that? Well, we can go to assignments and search for star.sys. And then if we double click the match, it highlights the icon in the manager and you can open it from there. And you might ask, how do we change the icon? I mean, let's say this sys icon offends my eyes. So how am I going to change it? Well, the simple answer is you don't. This is an icon manager, not an editor. You can't edit an icon. You can't load a resource. All it does is manage the associations between the icons in the resource and the file extensions that they have. I'm pretty sure that if we go with Thing Desktop, we'll be able to find tools to edit and add icons to the resource file. But I have to say that in the icon editing and management areas, Neodesk and Ease kick things bottom, frankly. Before we wrap up this episode, let's add a set to XBoot to allow us to boot into the Thing desktop at a click of a button. Now, as a reminder, we already have a configuration for Thing saved as the file dt underscore thing dot cnf in the XAS folder. So all we need to do in XBoot is to copy that over the desktop.conf at boot time and we're done. So let's go into XBoot. We're going to create a set called mint hyphen thing. We're going to add the line to copy our thing config file over desktop.config. Right, let's run that and test it. And it works fine. As I mentioned in uh, the last episode, I'm going to leave a more comprehensive feature check and comparison between the different desktops until a later video. But my one line review of the Thing desktop is... And it's a pleasure to use. It's incredibly good, but it's let down by its icon management. I hope you enjoyed this episode on Thing Desktop. Let me know what you think about it in the comments below. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you soon.